Was, like I said before, I, I was raised here in, in, uh, in Eatsville. Um, went to school here, started out in the two-room school in Sharptown. And then when they closed, I think it was like in 19, maybe 68, um, they closed those schools and uh, uh, we went to Rock Hall Middle School. And then Rock Hall Middle School became the high school, Bayside's. And when they consolidated all those schools to Kent County High. And so when I graduated from high school, I stayed here for about two months, moved to Delaware with my sister for about four years, and from then went into the Air Force. Spent 21 years in the Air Force, um, retired, went to work for Lockheed Martin for about six months. I met this guy here, um, Harry Grand. He was doing some community uh, work um, in Solano County. But I was, I was sitting there, and I, I just admired them, him, listening to him speak. And I, I said, meet this guy. So I went up to him. I said, man, you were great. I would love to work for you. In fact, I was actually uh, over at student housing for the, I was in the housing department there on campus for the first 25 years. And uh, he came to work for, with me over there. And then when I was moving into the chancellor's office, I had three people call me and say, well, you're bringing Ken with you, aren't you? And I kept thinking, either he's really good or they hate the person who's in the vice chancellor's <laughs> office right now. So I said, of course, after the third person, of course I'm bringing Ken with me. And so it's uh, kind of been a partnership. And it's really important, I think, in those roles to have he's like my work spouse. I mean, he's, he knows me probably more than my wife does better at this point. So uh, I would agree. Uh, I don't think anybody really wants my job, uh, yeah. mostly because of uh, the activism that actually is a part of everything in Berkeley. Um, I, I would say it's more like being the city manager uh, because it's 24-7. Uh, my phone rings day and night. Yeah. Uh, sometimes stuff that happens on campus, but also stuff that happens off campus. We so have. The deal was we were in the process of rebuilding the Memorial Stadium, uh, which is a football uh, stadium, and uh, we also always have activists that are involved in some something and there were trees that they didn't want to cut down so they uh, climbed the trees and had a pretty elaborate ecosystem going um, and so they were able to stay up there uh, um, winter rain well you know what in fact protests are pretty expensive to actually manage and with the with the disinvestment of the state I mean I think about 10 percent of our budget comes from the state of California so it means that tuition has really become the uh, probably the number two driver around our, our budgets after the federal government's grants. And so students don't oftentimes know that when we get involved in a protest, you know, I call them the million dollar meetings because there's a lot of a lot of us involved in decision making and trying to understand how to make it a safe and, and a equitable kind of uh, ending um, end game in that. And in that particular case, I mean, that was millions of dollars that were spent on those tree sitters. Uh, and there's no insurance company that's coming in and paying that bill. So that's actually having to come out of the university's budget to actually manage that. And I think many times uh, students don't understand now they're paying that, it's not the state of California. It's as different for me as night and day. It's, it's just, especially if you go down towards uh, the center of campus, well I guess you wouldn't call it the center, but Sprout Hall, where all the energy is around lunchtime because you have tabling and there's always a lot of, I mean you can walk through there and the school spirit at that university just overflows. I mean, and then you have you have the folks that are are preaching, or reading the Bible, or guys shouting who aren't even students. They just maybe had may have been students at one time, but just never left the campus. So they're like, I, I guess I would say, for me being um, growing up here, I think, and I and I've told him this before as my boss, because we ride together. And so we, we share a lot of things. And, and I, I always tell him that, you know, for me, it was always difficult uh, leaving home. And my grandmother practically raised me. And so it was like, hold your breath, close your eyes, and step out. Don't be afraid to fly. <laughs> and I meant that not just literally, but don't be afraid to spread your wings. If an opportunity presents itself, take a chance, take a risk. You know, because that's, that's a pretty big step that you're taking when you're leaving family and friends and what you're accustomed to, to really make that move. But when you know someone, it makes it a lot easier. So, you know, I say that to anyone who's going to see this video, if you ever think about the West Coast, even if you go to Southern California, we're in Northern California, call. Yeah, yeah. You know, because it, it, makes, the, it makes the change 
more comfortable, I think. Where did you